thanks to short and cheap flights, three and a half million tourists come to Morocco every year in search of the exotic treats of North Africa. And it can feel that they all come to Marrakesh at once. Marrakesh! Marrakesh. Undeniably! Marrakesh. Thank you. Thank you. Marrakesh is undeniably a fantastic tourist destination, but after playing host to legions of travellers in search of the exotic, it's become something of a victim of its own success. But that success hasn't quite spoiled Marrakesh. Nevertheless, I want to go to a place that's even more Moroccan, the original capital of the country, Fez, 300 miles to the north. Something tells me that Fez is going to be different. The ancient and mysterious city of Fez is the oldest and largest medieval city in the world. It's not as easy to get to as Marrakesh, but that's how you avoid all the tourists, by taking the extra three hours travel via Casablanca to get here. So why is this place a hidden gem? It's partly the lack of outsiders, partly the incredible sense of travelling back in time, and then there's just the way it feels. This is totally one of those towns you want to come to without a specific destination in mind and give yourself a good two or three hours just to get completely lost in. I'm wandering around Fez's Medina, a medieval shopping mall that also plays home to 350,000 people. Shopping here is not really consumerism, it's more a way of life that hasn't changed much for thousands of years. As you can probably tell, Fez looks amazing, but the first thing you notice is the smell. As I stand here, I can smell blood, coriander, cumin, cat pee, and cigarette smoke. It's an extraordinary rainbow of scent. It's amazing. It's a fantastic town for wandering about and wandering in. The streets are so narrow, there's no room for cars. That man's got a very big ass. Sorry. Each area of the market or souk has its own specialty, but the Medina is famous for one particular spectacle of sight and smell. So as you can probably tell, we're in the shoe district, and I'm guessing it's part of a larger leather district because we're walking downhill to, um, Baron, to uh, Fez's famous tanneries. Pardon, monsieur. Have you ever seen anything that looks like this? It's where the skins of animals are transformed using ancient tanning techniques into fancy bits of leather for handbags and shoes. Now, if you're wondering why I'm using the double-barreled mint nostril device here, it's because these tanneries look amazing, but they smell terrible. To be very careful not to die myself. 600 years ago, Fez had about 200 of these tanneries, but now this is the oldest surviving and smelliest one in the world. What's going on anyway, by the way, over there, where you see all the vats are white, that's where all the fur gets taken off the leather. And then it's brought into these vats here, and this is where they dye the, uh, the hides. If you're feeling brave, you can slip the foreman a quid and tour the tanneries at ground zero, like me. Although you might prefer to view and smell the scene from one of the terraces. Inside these vats, it's a mixture of mineral dyes and uh, in some cases saffron, and I imagine probably some cochineal, but also a fair bit of cow urine and pigeon crap as well. And apparently the pigeon crap is used to keep the smell down. It's not working. 
But if you're not put off by the odour of old flesh and cow urine, there are plenty of fancy leather goods to buy in here. And there are plenty of other bargains out there in the Medina, from carpets to the city's famous brimless hats. But buyer beware, there are no easy sales here in the souk. Give me 80 euros. 80 euros? Qu'est-ce que c'est le mot en français, or le, le phrase en français for you are having a laugh? <laughs> Do you know that expression? Haggling is best viewed more as an art form than a competition. It's a kind of street theatre you really have to throw yourself into. Pour moi, combien? How much? How much? How much? How much combien pour moi? Give me only 400. 400 dirham. Holiday time is precious. Don't waste it by worrying about being ripped off. Just pick a price you're happy with. No, I know. You're just having a laugh. No, I want just say, smell your little wallet. Yes, you want to smell my little wallet. I've got nothing here. You are not opening. So, how much? Give me 250. 250 dirham. How about we say 150 dirham? Give 200. Thank you. <laughs> Even though I haggled him down from over a thousand dirham to just 200, about 14 quid, nevertheless I still have that niggling feeling of being ripped off. But you're happy, you probably, and I'm happy. They both happy. Yeah, so that's... Everybody that's, happy. Exactly, and that's how we want to leave it. Super, a fragile lamp made of glass and razor-sharp spikes. Perfect for air travel. Generally well preserved, the Medina is full of some beautiful and historically significant architecture, both secular and religious. Remember though, if you do visit a sacred place, make sure you dress appropriately. I'm in the Medusa Bu Inania, an ancient theological college, and one of the few religious buildings in Fez non-Muslims can enter. The ideal place to stay in Fez is a Riyadh, a sort of Moroccan B&B. Riyadhs face inward around a garden courtyard, so there's a wonderful sense of being protected from the city's hustle, with a peaceful and natural centre. A room at a Riyadh can vary in cost from 40 to 300 pounds per night, depending on your tastes and budget. There's a great contrast of calm here compared to the relative madness of the Medina. It's good to have a decent place to spend your evenings in Fez because it's not exactly Ibiza when the sun goes down. Nightlife in Fez is not really centered around bars, nightclubs and discos, but if you come into the old city in the night time, you will get the chance to experience some very exciting street life and some rather delicious food. The closest thing you get to Moroccan home cooking can be found here in these roadside restaurants. Lamb tagine is a local favourite, but if you're not a meat eater like me, get used to vegetable tagine every night, or fill up on the local bread, hobs. I've had a brilliant time in Fez, but be warned, it's so intense here that a couple of days can end up feeling like a week. It's a riot of sights and sounds, and particularly smells. And I don't think I know of anywhere this close to home that's this different and this exciting. <laughs> 